G'day guys, Bren Carter here again, and today we're gonna be talking about something a little bit controversial. We're gonna be talking about vegan wines and how we ended up making wines using animal products. But first, let's roll that intro. G'day guys, we're gonna be talking about something a little bit controversial today. Vegan wines. I understand there's a lot of things surrounding veganism that can be quite controversial, and in particular wines, I find a more fascinating one because a lot of questions that I feel regarding uh, vegan wines is how we ended up arriving at a place where we're utilizing animal products to make something that is inherently based around grapes. There's also an aura surrounding wine that uh, that can be quite romantic at times. The, the use of animal products seems to be a little bit inconsistent with the entire purpose, I think, of wine, which is to connect people to place and connect people to, indeed to other people as well. It's interesting to see what other YouTubers, um, but also other, other websites and their commentary surrounding uh, the use of animal products in wine. To be honest, there's a degree of confusion. Uh, and from a wine producer's perspective, I think there's, uh, there's uh, the confusion is leading to a few incorrect uh, assumptions as well. So uh, quite often what we tend to find uh, is people believe and the, the usage of animal-based products is to fine out a lot of the, the remaining yeast cells. So yeast are utilized in the fermentation process. Uh, when they, they finish fermentation, uh, of course we need to try to remove the, the wine and off, the, off the yeast cells. And this is the point where a lot of people come in and say, oh, the fining agents that we utilize, which are the animal-based products of things like casein, which is a milk-based protein, uh, gelatin, which we won't talk about where that comes from, uh, isinglass, which is very similar to gelatin, but um, a little bit uh, less harsh, uh, egg whites as well. And if you note, all of these are actually all protein-based uh, finding agents. There is a confusion that a lot of these uh, finding agents are utilized to, to assist with this process and to a degree it's kind of true but it's not necessarily the chief motivator why any winery would want to use them. There is a big difference between what we call fining and filtration. Filtration processes are processes that typically clarify a wine. So the removal of, of yeast uh, well, typically it's actually the removal of the wine off the yeast, uh, is what would be typically deemed as more of a filtration type process, what we call settling. Easiest way to do this in a winery is actually to chill the tank down, that changes its density, uh, causing yeast to be able to settle nice and easily, and we have a more clarified wine from that. The use of these proteins uh, typically is used to get rid of or fine, finding out what we call phenolics. Phenolics are those bitter compounds, sometimes fining agents, stronger ones like gelatin may be used to actually strip color out of a wine, if, uh, and particularly for a white wine, or other finding agents to what they would say unlock or unmask uh, particular flavors uh, out of a white wine, when really it is the removal of unwanted flavors. Working back a step, we need to start questioning how those flavors actually arrived in the wine in the first place. See, bitter compounds will typically, and higher phenolic compounds, will typically occur in wines that have been over-extracted. There, there is a, a process during, uh, during harvesting and then when, when you're actually receiving grapes into a winery, whether it's crushing, pressing, uh, fermentation, how long grapes will stay on their skins. And the longer they stay on their skins or the harsher processes, whether we're what we call pumping them over, making wines basically like making a giant cup of tea just for an extended period of time. And of course you can make a giant cup of tea very, very, very phenolic. You can make it a little bit too bitter. So winemakers typically during the, the course of what we call the harvest or the vintage, uh, when we're getting in grapes like crazy and it's a completely manic process, we only have one chance a year to do that. So we try to maximize the amount of grapes. And I, I mean, we as a, uh, the royal we, or all, all winemakers, will try to maximize the amount of grapes that they can actually compress into one tiny little, little space. And having the care and attention on each and every little small batch can be one of the hardest things actually for a winemaker to do when they've got that inherent pressure to try to fill up a winery and get things nice and clean and keep rocking and rolling on a day-to-day -day basis. So what happens is a lot of winemakers will typically want to over extract wines and then wait until after the vintage or uh, particularly in, in the case of some white wines and the use of things like gelatin will typically be done as juice, might over extract that juice and then hold it off fermentation for a little while by chilling it down. Uses a lot of energy but for a bulk based process it's pretty critical to be able to sort of be able to come back when everyone's level headed probably had a bit of sleep and be able to have a, a calculated estimate as to how much finding agent to use and what the ideal point of that would be. So little bench trials would typically be done to, 
to determine exactly what's to be used, when and how and, and how much and what the end result for that wine particularly is. So these finding agents have really evolved as, I'm going to say they're, they're more like patches for a, a present problem, which is more um, factory based processing of wine. For many vegans out there that can be a really uh, frustrating process because there's no real imposition on wineries to actually label what they put into wine. A very simple uh, way is that most wineries could, if they don't use any animal based products, just put vegan friendly on the back. Uh, I think that's a, a very simple and easy process that would make um, finding these wines that don't use animal products uh, a lot lot easier to, to, to navigate. In the case of, of Unico Zello, we don't use any animal based products um, because we just make sure that we don't get bitter uh, aspects into our wines in the first place by handling them a little bit gentler uh, or by utilizing different, uh, typically, funnily enough, quite old school techniques. It's almost like a back to the future uh, where we might use a bit of skin contact uh, in like a white wine, for example. Uh, and then on the flip side, during fermentation, we might use a very warm fermentation, very oxidative fermentation to uh, cause what, the, what we call the, the tannins, the phenols, the phenolic compounds, those bitter compounds, the tannins, they will polymerize. Polymerize meaning they'll actually form longer chains. They become heavier molecules. Then they drop out of solution. So we don't inherently need to use uh, a, a lot of these uh, finding agents. But I just thought it would be a, a great little exercise to, to actually showcase you from a wine production standpoint exactly why winemakers would be utilizing these products in the first place and also how we can actually mitigate them, get rid of them. If you want to assist winemakers in being able to not use animal-based products, encouraging them to be vegan friendly, of course, is a great one. Uh, being more readily accepting of wines that have a slight haze or wines that have a slightly too high bitterness factor um, is always going to give uh, at least larger wineries that have this uh, cultural tendency to utilize these products uh, giving them license to be able to kind of get away with not having to um, but anyway guys I hope that helps <laughs>